Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to explain how to configure ATD BLE fuel level sensor using our USB BLE adapter. We need to fire up the configurator and connect the adapter into one of the USB ports of your laptop or PC. For the device to work, you need to install the drivers. Currently, they are installed along with the configurator. If the adapter is not listed among your COM and LPT devices in the Windows Device Manager, after it was connected to your computer, try reinstalling the drivers. You can download them from our website's Downloads section. In this case, you can see that the device is defined as COM25. We click on the BLE, then the TD BLE settings button, and then the Enter Sensor Serial Number button. Here you need to type down the 6-digit serial number of the sensor that you can find on its head and then click Connect. If there are several BLE devices around, it may take some time before the sensor is connected, or perhaps you will need to press the Connect button one more time. Having connected the sensor, you can see the following parameters and settings. COM port, sensor's temperature, version of the adapter's firmware, connection button, click on it in case you need to switch to another sensor. Further below, the type of the sensor, in this case the FLS, is shown as well as the sensor's serial number, firmware version, and MAC address, used to link the sensor with GPS trackers directly in case they support our data exchange protocol Escort BLE and have a Bluetooth model of the 4.0 or higher version. In this menu you can also select the measurement range from 1 to 1023 or from 1 to 4095 and the filtrations level. Please remember that during the sensor and tank calibrations, the filtration must be deactivated. After changing any settings, be sure to click on the Save the Parameters to Device button or use the shortcut Ctrl S. Below the Save button, you can find the message box. Here, all messages from the sensor are displayed. Such messages let you know what sensor is connected, what's its stages, and whether the setting changes have been saved. To the right from the settings section, you can see the image of the sensor. As the fuel fills the tubes, the tubes of the image also get filled with green. Here you can see the level reading, the RSSI signal strength in decibels per meter, and the battery charge. Further below, you can find the sensor calibration button. On the same tab here, you can find the calibration button, which we will cover in a few minutes, and the service button. Currently, in the service section, only the following options are available. Firmware update, engineer menu, and security. The other two are still in development. Let's open the security menu. To change and save any settings of the sensor, you need to enter the password or delete it here first. To do so, simply type in the password and click the button you need. As you can see, the message box just showed the change in the sensor's stages. The password was deleted, after which the connection with the sensor was re-established for further configuration. Note that the lock icon has changed its color because the password was deleted. If you are changing any settings, they get marked by the exclamation marks that are later replaced by green ticks once the changes were successfully saved to the device. Once you switch off the filtration, you can proceed with the sensor calibration. Click the Sensor Calibration button. You now can calibrate the sensor after cutting its tubes without fuel. This type of calibration is no worse than the standard one with fuel. However, if you choose it, 
your tank calibration table must be very accurate to offset any increase in the margin of error caused by the calibration without fuel. By clicking on this tumbler, you can switch the sensor calibration without fuel on or off. When it's on, you simply need to press the calibrate button. The sensor will set new full and empty calibration values automatically. You will see them change in the same dialog window. After that, simply press OK and proceed to the tank calibration. But if you prefer calibrating the sensor with fuel, you need to switch the calibration without fuel off and then fill the tubes with fuel by putting it in some recipient or turning it upside down and pouring the fuel in while the drainage holes are covered by an insulation tape, for example. When the tubes are full and the level is reported as stable, click the full button. Then let the fuel out of the tubes, wait for 2-3 minutes and press the empty button once the level is stable once again. The sensor calibration is done. Don't forget to clear the drainage holes before installing the sensor in the tank. In the main menu, you can also see the CNT or current raw level reading. It can also be found in the calibration dialog window. We have a separate video on our YouTube channel on how to use the CNT to run some basic diagnostics on the sensor. On to the tank calibration. Press the calibration button. Here you can select the method of tank calibration, refueling or draining. The refueling method is used in the majority of cases. Here you establish the step or portion that will be poured into the tank several times to create the tank calibration table. We recommend pouring at least 10 portions, better 20. Remember, the more portions you add, the more precise will be the conversion of level readings into liters or gallons. And you can select liters or gallons down here as well. After you're finished with these settings, you can start creating the table by clicking the Run button. Pour the portion of fuel in the tank, wait until the level is stable and then click the Add Portion button. If you poured a portion and accidentally added it to the table before the level stabilized, or if you added it twice, you can always click on the cell and edit or delete it. Once the tank is full and the table is finished, press the Finish button, confirm your decision and save the table in any folder of your choosing. You will need to upload it into your monitoring platform later on. Now let's go back to the service menu. Mainly, update the firmware option. Using our configurator, you can set the sensor to the firmware updating mode and then upload the firmware file into the sensor via the NRF Connect app developed by the manufacturers of the Bluetooth chips implemented in our sensors. When you click on the Start BLE Firmware Update button, the 30 second timer starts. While the clock is ticking, you need to find the updating device in the NRF Connect on your smartphone, select it, press the Connect button and then the DFU button. After that, select the zip file type and then find and select the firmware file that you previously downloaded onto your smartphone. The update will start and you will just need to wait until the progress bar hits 100%. The update will then be complete.